Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus is Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Lord. Praise God. Uh, so this evening's worship service is titled 2020 Summary. I believe on Facebook it's 2020 Year in Review. And we're going to go over this past year, but uh, mainly what Holy Spirit has for us this evening is we're actually going to go into, um, into Exodus chapter 20, and we're going to spend some time in there. Um, but before we get into that, please, uh, let's all pray. Uh, it's been quite a year. Amen. Amen. It's been quite a year. And uh, I just want you guys to know that uh, God has it. Amen. Amen. There's no question as far as how God has us. Amen. There's many of us that went through many trials this year. Right? Many hurts, many pains. Right? Many ailments, whatever it is, right? But the glory of God is that we have this one perfect man. Amen. For all of eternity. Hallelujah. His name is Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. That no matter what comes our way, Father God says, you just thank me for this one perfect sacrifice. Yes. And I will take control over your entire life. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Elder Lance, will you open us up in prayer? Father God, I just come to you. Father, I just pray that your spirit falls so strong in here tonight, Lord, that hearts will be touched. Father, I just pray that you just uh, be with joy, Lord, as he brings the word. And Father, I just pray that you hide him behind the cross, Lord, and just uh, let it all come from you. Father, I just pray that, Lord, you just be with the ones that come through here tonight, Lord, and whether they're sick or taking trips or whatever, I just pray you go for them. Yes. Father, I just thank you, Lord, for all you do, Lord, and your many blessings. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise God. God's good. All the time. They just keep getting gooder and gooder in Jesus' name. Amen. Right. Sister Dina here, praise God. Woo. Let me tell her church starts at 6 30. <laughs> <laughs> Sister Dan was all over it, huh? 6 30. <laughs> praise God. We gotta give you a hard time. As much as you work, right? Praise God you're here. Hallelujah. It's all good. Oh, I just love it. Don't you love being around this worshiper? When I say worshipers in spirit and in truth, it means that you're always, yes. always, always. Hallelujah. Can you say that? Always. always. And that's the glory of God in your life, in my life, that always, no matter what's happening, Jesus is my Lord. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm just speaking the truth, amen? I'm just speaking the truth. 
If there's a bill on my table, I know what I just saw, that I owe that bill, but it's not going to affect what I see. What do I see? That my God provides all of my needs. Amen? So we are seesaw champions. Amen? We're not going to be affected by what this enemy wants to distract us with, with what you're going to, right? We're going to stay focused. You know, you cannot tell me that you stay focused on seeing Jesus when your mouth speaks curses and gossip and slander and bickering and cussing. That's not Holy Spirit. Can I get an amen, church? That's demonic. That's the world spirit, amen? Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So when the people saw the thunder and lightning and heard the trumpet and saw the mountain in smoke, guess what? They trembled in fear. Just like they show this image to you. Amen? You can just imagine as far as the magnitude, right? Last Wednesday, we, we heard the glory of God. Where is the glory of God? Amen? Amen? Everybody do this with me. It's not for me. It's for the Lord. Hallelujah. Where is the glory of God? Amen. Hallelujah. They stayed at a distance and said to Moses, speak to us yourself. We will listen. This is the hurtful part. But do not have God speak to us or we will die. These are the scriptures we're going to be in. What's coming up after that statement, do not have God speak to us or we will die. As you guys know, many will die. They got what they spoke. You see, fear does it. We just had a beloved fellowship, worship service before this. The power of the words we speak, the enemy's hoping that you have diarrhea of the mouth. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Oh, I'm always going to be like this. I just can't take it no more. This is, a, this is going to be. Rebuke that. Yeah. Amen. I pray that you guys see in the spiritual realm that the enemy is bound up by the blood of Lord Jesus Christ. The enemy cannot do anything to a beloved child of God. Hallelujah. Jesus is Lord. The enemy cannot go against the blood of God. The Lord of God. The enemy cannot speak to you unless you allow him. Right? Unless you allow him. So we're going to be in where we started this year. Yes, we started this year. Go back. You'll see the fruit. Holy Spirit spoke this word, Exodus 2020, for the year 2020. And we're going to go back into that. Then we're going to go to Proverbs 9, verse 10, and we're going to close out in Acts 9, verses 3, 3, 3, 3, yeah, amen, thank you. 3 through 10, yeah. <laughs> thank you, Lord, hallelujah. <laughs> Moses said to the people, Remember, they're trembling with fear. Amen? Show me your trembling. Right? Have you ever been trembling in fear? Yes. Mm. Thank you for your confession. Lord Jesus Christ, we plead your blood help us, Father. It's covered by your blood. Amen? Amen. What we trembled once in fear, we now tremble in rejoicing. Amen? We now tremble in glory. Amen? We are careful of your goodness, of your love, of the doctrine. Hallelujah. You guys are so good. It's overflowing. Uh, this is what Moses had to tell the people. Do not be afraid. God has come to test you so that the fear of God will be with you to keep you from sinning. Amen? Amen? Amen. Here is the man of God. Hallelujah. Praise God. I'm surrounded by men and women of God. Hallelujah. Is Jesus Christ your Lord? Amen. And then there is no difference of Moses and you. Some of you need to hear this because religion could put something very bad on you and it's demonic. Amen. We have one God. You would call him Agape. Who is he? Amen. Well, does this mean that we worship Satan? Does this mean that we worship people in the Bible? We only worship God Almighty. And how do we worship God? It's through Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Oh, glory to God. This is why we are so blessed, beloved church. Amen. This is why. It's God's presence. Not only in this holy building, which we call Open Arms Community Church. I call it God's holy church. Amen. And Holy Spirit. Freely. Glory to God freely through his. There's no obstruction.
Because guess what? If I start acting crunchy, or if I start saying things that don't, we're blessed with elders that will say, we need talk. I'm blessed with the pastor to say, let's talk. What's going on? It's called accountability. And this is who the advocate is who lives on the inside. He's Holy Spirit. And when we bless Holy Spirit, we know, I cannot continue living life carelessly. Because I know the price that was paid for this glory to live in me. Amen. And I'm going to bless this glory of God because, Holy Spirit, you know me by name. And I will not do anything to hurt you. Amen? Amen. You see, God is saying this clearly from this beloved Moses. Do not be afraid. Amen. You see, it's in this fear that we tend to start saying things. And you think it's okay because either you're the only one there or maybe some family members. Every demon. You know what the demon cannot stand against? Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. Amen. That brother, praise Jesus right there. Amen. Jesus Christ is Lord. Right? Pastor, what are you trying to tell me? What, what, that means whatever foul thing has happened in your life that wants to try to give you diarrhea of the mouth, I mean that. Immediately when that thing takes place, thank you, Lord. Lord, I thank you. Well, Pastor, are you saying that you promise I'm going to feel better? No. No. Honestly, sometimes you don't even feel any different. Any, but you know what you're doing? You're rebuking the enemy. And you're allowing God's presence with the anointing Holy Spirit to flow through your life. Amen. You're allowing His presence to flow through your life. Hallelujah. Did you know that I can come? I can. Did you know that I I can actually in fellowship, Brother William, I can come and I can say curses to Brother William. And did you know that if he's receptive to it, which I know he won't be, he'll rebuke me. He will. But if he's receptive to it, do you know that I can make him sick? Yeah. 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 It's proven. Yeah. How in the world is that possible? Right? I didn't pour stuff down his throat. Right? I didn't jab him with anything. But my words spoke curses. And all it takes is for somebody to hear the word and go, maybe I am. Is that not the condition of the world we live in now, brother? Yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah. My goodness, somebody sneezes, everybody panics. It's just a sneeze. Say, God bless you, pray for them, and move on with your life. Amen? Oh, my goodness. Somebody talks and it's like, oh, my goodness. Oh, they're hugging the man of God. I'm covered by the blood of Jesus. Amen? I am. Listen, anybody, anybody can hug me. I told you this before anybody can hug me. Now, are you can hear my heart? You guys have heard me. I ask permission because, right, we're in a different day and age now. Right? I ask permission. I don't go up and I don't want to cause somebody to stumble or fall. The word of God says, don't you cause somebody to stumble or fall. Right? Lord Jesus said, just go ahead and tie a cinder block around your neck and throw yourself in Harrington Lake. It's up to you. Right? So say when you do not fear. Hallelujah. And I love this because here Moses is saying, God has come to test you. Now you would think with everything they experience, Brother Kevin, in the breakthrough after breakthrough, listen, this is God's people now that left a land that was beyond wealthy, bankrupt them in one day. That's my God. Say it with me, my God. My God took all of their wealth, took it away. See, we sometimes we need to rest in this to understand the order of God, because God don't play games. There you go. But what a shame is it that when we receive Jesus, we think that we have this unlimited credit card to just go spending on whatever luxuries we want. It don't work like that. Thank you, Pastor. They don't work like that, right? There's no such thing as a grace card. Grace has a name. His name is Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Bless Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Bless the Lord. Amen. 
Fear of the Lord. Say with me, fear of the Lord. So we go back to what Agape saw when he was tempted by Satan. And this is what God taught us this past Sunday. There's no new trick to Satan. Right? He wants you to think to go after that thing because it's good. Right? He wants you to think that when you obtain that good, oh, it's going to be so pleasing to you. And he's also deceiving you on a whole other level, saying that when you're pleased with that, you're going to have more desires to do something. You see, Lord Jesus Christ saw the tactics of the enemy. You try to tell me to turn this stone into bread when I am the bread of life. Right? You try to tell me to commit suicide, that the angels are going to save me, but you don't know that I can call upon 12 legions of angels right now, and you would be extinguished and the whole world would be dust. Oh! You try to tell me what is desirable. When I know that the reason I am here is to bring back a child to the Father so the Father can love the child Amen. like a good and perfect daddy does. Amen. Amen. So forget about this desire of this world. Lord Jesus said, uh -uh. I desire only one. Amen. He is a God. Amen. Don't you love our Lord Jesus Christ? That even though the rich ruler said, hey, good teacher, he said, why do you call me good? He's so quick to say, it's not just me. Even the disciples couldn't get it. Can I get an amen? The disciples couldn't understand. And they were with them 24 7. And they couldn't get it that, wait a minute, why must you go? And Lord Jesus is like, what? I've been telling you. I have to leave. You see, Lord Jesus Christ demonstrated the fear of the Lord because he knew the relationship with the Father. Yeah. I pray right now in Jesus' name, every soul, every ear sitting in God's holy church, everyone on Facebook will have ears to hear. And Lord Jesus Christ, I will say exactly, I pray the Holy Spirit wants. Father God says that when you have a relationship with him this intimately, as a child would with a father, that no matter what happens in this vapor of a life, nothing will move you from your worship unto Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Because the Father's spirit is living in you. You know, I love the demonstrations, the illustrations. We've never done it. I've never done it in the 13 plus years of ministry. When we had daddies up here with their children. And sometimes we need those kind of visuals. And that's why Holy Spirit blesses us. It's all God now. I don't know how all this happened. It's all Holy Spirit. Amen. I, 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 I don't know how. I, I don't know how. It's just worship. Amen. But there's sometimes when we need to see before our eyes a demonstration. And the reason why is because Lord Jesus Christ taught this when he came down to this earth and he started the ministry. He told stories, parables. Why did he tell parables and stories? Because everyone was locked up with all the scriptures in the Bible. Everybody knew everything. And here Lord Jesus, he had to come as the perfect beloved son of God to introduce God, not as a God that is just ready to smack you with a fly slaughter, but a God who has been longing for you. Just like the prodigal son, amen? amen? See, every one of us, at one point in our life, was the prodigal son, prodigal daughter. Right? We went and did things, whether because things were done to you or whether it was your own choice. Guess what? You have to own up to it. For healing to manifest within you, you have to confess, I messed up. I messed up. Right? I messed up. It, it doesn't matter if somebody did anything wrong to you. I messed up. You know what that does? It completely washes you clean from the top of your bun to the soles of your feet. It completely washes you clean with 
the anointing because you gave it all to Christ in true repentance saying, I wronged you, Father. Forgive me. I plead your blood. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. And if you this forgiveness when we allow this presence to flow, then now Father says, you're forgiven. Amen. And now I will work in your future. I will work on this person that you're praying for. Amen? Oh, glory to God. How, how much does one fear God when he has the ability? Thank you, Holy Spirit. How many of you, when things are not going your way or maybe you're in a lot of pain, how many of you just say, keep it coming? Or how many of you right away say, stop? So half the room. So the other half is holier than holy. Let me ask that question again. Lord Jesus is right here. Act like it. I'm just being serious now. Amen. If you get upset, please, you and God discuss this out. But Lord Jesus is right here. His presence is in you. So I'm asking you to be a part of this worship. I'm sorry you had a long day. Guess what? I did too. But let's bless God. Amen. Let's bless God. Let's get in. Amen. So how many of you, once again, how many of you, when things are hurting in your body, do you just say, oh, just keep it coming? Yeah, just keep it going. Or how many of you say, stop? Uh, Look around below, man. That's 100% of us. Amen. And I thank you for your honesty, right? Right away. Stop. Look at Lord Jesus. He had the ability at any point. Can you imagine when God says stop? I mean it, the entire universe would be wiped out. Yeah. Yeah. Just start hurting. Just start hurting. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Praise God, I'm not God. Because I'll just keep on hitting that reset button. <laughs> And praise God. That's why I'm a beloved child of God. But I mean, seriously, I don't think, oh, that messed up, that messed up, that. Right? No, my son ain't going to go through that. No, no, no. I mean, seriously. How many of you, if you're walking down Walmart and your child goes off and you see a cart coming that's about to hit him, oh, just let him go? No. Oh, we're preaching now, right? Some of you would just jump out, right? Some of you would snag them up. Amen? Do you not think that the Father wanted to do that? Yes. But look at how much He loves you. Yes. And this is the beginning of us fearing God. How much He loves me. God saw that the only thing good, this is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. My beloved. And Holy Spirit. That it wasn't the sound back then. I don't know what the sound was. Okay. Right? For all of eternity. Agape. Amen. Agape. Amen. Agape. This is the only thing pleasing to God in that excruciating pain that the perfect one endured because blood had to be the pain. And it's his blood. God's blood. Say that with me. God's blood. God's blood. And God desires nothing more than for his spirit to live freely in a beloved child. Yes. The question is, are you that beloved child, church? Yes. Amen. Yes. You notice what took place? It goes past, right? Right, beloved child? It goes past all the gifts of Holy Spirit. Yes. It goes past, right, speaking in tongues. It goes past prophecy. It goes past. Yes. Why? Because it's his spirit yes. who lives and dwells within me. Yes. That I will bless God Almighty that I will not allow a thought to wander. I will hold it captive and crucify it because it's pleasing. It's pleasing to God Almighty. And I will line up the sacrifice because in that resurrection power of Holy Spirit within, I will rejoice. I will speak life even though I see no life. I will speak blessings even though all I see is curses. I will speak healing even though all I see is sickness. I will speak peace in order to 
to have that power and to completely lay it down and say, I will take it. Yes. Yes. I will take this rest. Take this for the Simpsons. It goes past preaching now, right? It goes past what the building says. It goes past as far as how long you've been a Christian. Because you look at it and you say, This is for me. And when you have this life changing revelation, you're immovable because you know how much the Father loves you. And you want nothing more but to allow his presence to flow through you and tell whoever, whoever God leads you to, oh, God is ever real to love you. Amen. Listen, I know you did wrong, but it's forgiven. How do you know? You, you don't even know me. I know, but I know Jesus. Amen. And he forgave you. And he forgave you. Hallelujah. And I just don't feel like it. Let me come to you. And I lay hands on you. You will feel the presence of God on you. It has nothing to do with us. It's His Spirit. Yeah. Hallelujah. Say His name, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name, Holy Spirit. Proverbs 9, verse 10. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and knowledge of the Holy One. Is understanding. Amen. We're going to break this down in two parts because this is what Holy Spirit said to me. We're going to break it down in two parts. The fear of the Lord is the beginning. Right? Meaning, you start there. Yes. Amen? Yes. If we're running a race, and there's a line right there, and everybody's lined up to the line, and you take off, but yet I'm over here. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I don't even you back like I'm running, you know what I mean? You see me running, there's police or something wrong. I'm going to say running, because I rarely run. Amen? Praise God. I take my time. Praise God. I was running around yesterday, though, praise God. Glory to God, that's the to the cross. But, you know, I, I, I want to run this race, right? But then I would pray, what do you be like? No, you don't start there. What happens if I started there and it's an official race? Would I qualify? No. no. <laughs> Brother Lips said you get a head start, praise God. <laughs> But unfortunately, you know, when it's time to hand out the trophy, and I think I won, do I get a trophy? Because I didn't start. Right? In the beginning. See, right now, God wants us to start with this beginning. 2020 is done and all. Amen? And the glory of our God is that we are gooder and gooder. In Jesus' name. Amen? Hallelujah! It's all because the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? Get up. Say when we get up. Get up. To go. go. Amen. Now don't you love this? Get up, go. Get up. Right? Get up, go. Now notice that if I'm laying down, <laughs> can I go in this position? No. What does a brother have to do before I can go? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Get up. Amen. Say it with me in Jesus' name. Get up. Get up. Hallelujah. And go. Praise God. You saw this picture earlier when we were looking at the mountain and all its glory, the thunder and everything. And this is, it was taken from this picture in Acts 9, verses 5 through 6. We're going to go over this quickly. Who are you, Lord? Saul asked. I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting, he replied. Now get up and go into the city, and you will be told what you must do. Amen. Amen. Say with me. Get up, get up. and go. Up. The beauty of this message, we can go. We can go all night, of course, with this message. Amen. Amen. 
we have to understand first and foremost the state of mind that the Apostle Paul was in. You're talking about a murderer. You're talking about one of the most evil people. But you notice with religious people, he was doing holy work. He was carrying out the law. Persecuting and killing Christians. See, this is how easy we can get misguided in pride. When we just want what we want versus what God wants. That's right. Amen. Amen. And don't you love the beauty of this is because when that light came upon him, the word of God says he trembled. Yep. Amen. He fell. And it was at that very moment where he knew. Is that you, Lord? See, you really need to get this in your relationship with God because here is someone that has been running in pride and you, you, you just can't imagine as far as what Saul has went through as a child. I say it all the time amongst friends and family and you guys, you guys have probably heard me say it in the pulpit. If there was anybody in the Bible that I connected with a lot was Saul. Because of the horrible things that I've done in my life. But it finally got to the point where he was on the road and he was going to go get some more. He was going to go hand out a beating. He was going to hand out healing. He had to go ask for permission to go out further from his own territory because that's how passionate he was. Because that's how the devil deceived him. If we get religious with God and you want to depend on your own understanding and understanding His Word without His Spirit, this is what will happen. Amen. You will start becoming so holier than thou that you won't even be able to stand your own reflection. Yes. I say this because the devil tried that with me. And by the grace of God, he saved me. So can you imagine when you, when you just momentarily reflect on what Saul was going through as him and his crew was on their way, the mission was, I'm going to kill every Christian I can. But you notice that his mind was already on Christ. But out of anger, out of insecurity, out of the law, out of religion, out of not wanting to worship, the holy God, but be filled with everything that he knows. Having stripes and, oh, I can do this. I'm a teacher of the law. I'm this, I'm this. Can I tell you, we are nothing without the Lord Jesus Christ. And then we are nothing. I am nothing. I am nothing. I am nothing. I am your brother. I am your brother. And I say right now, I am a beloved child of God. Jesus Christ is my Lord and his holy spirit. I will pray with you. I will bless you as much as I can possibly bless you. But I have nothing without my Lord Jesus Christ. And this was the glory of God. When his presence hit Saul, right there where he was at. That he was, is that you, Lord? God wants this from us. God wants this from us. God wants us to choose to be blinded by His glory. God wants us to be blinded with His goodness and how much He loves us and not blinded by all the fears and worries of all this chaos of this world. Amen? Isn't that where this world is at? Say when you get up and go. Get up.
other than all of heaven rejoices. He is our Savior. He is our Lord. He is our God. He is the one that answers for us. Amen. How do I say when we get up? Yeah. Hallelujah. Now we go. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You've got praise. Amen. When you can fear how much the Father loves you. When you can fear how much the Father loves you. When you can fear how much the Son loves you. That here's this perfect sacrifice, Lord Jesus Christ, with all authority in heaven, to stop. And he did it. Are you kidding me? And you're going to tell me that you're allowed to go do this and go do that when it goes against his spirit? Demon. It's time to wake up. Amen. 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 It's time to wake up. There's no more soft messages. Oh. Amen. Oh. You, you, you ever, when you were little, you ever, when your parents said, come on, get ready, get in the car, it's time to go. Some of the parents were like, I just did that today. Right? Come on, get ready, it's time to go, right? And you notice, did, did any of you log again? No? Y'all better than me. Because to me, I don't know what it is, pray for me, even right now to this day, you know. To me, it's like, that gives me 10 more minutes. And I thought that as a child, right? Until, if you look at me closely when we're in the fellowship, when we're just loving on each other, this ear is a lot bigger than this ear. And the reason why, my mom would carry me with my ear. Oh, I love my mom. So, you know, praise God, bless my mom. Praise God, she's a saved woman. Amen? But I kid you not, she didn't act like it back then. <laughs> <laughs> the way she's been me out there. And she said, I have told you, right, that it's time to go get in the car. Listen, pray for me, beloved church family. Amen? Pray for me. In this, in this gifting, and this anointing, what a blessing and honor it is that, that I said yes to be a pastor. Pray for me. Because that's the tone we're in now. That's the tone we're in. Get, get in the car. And some of you look at me like, Pastor Doug, why are you asking all the prayer for you? Because we're about to leave. Laugh. 
in the office. He has no idea how much I blessed me. But God knows. He sent him there and I needed it. Amen. You know, the beauty is with our God is I can't be everything to you. But the beauty of our Father God is maybe Pastor John can. Well, what if both pastors can? Maybe Elder Lance can. Maybe Brother PJ can. Maybe Elder Howard can. Maybe Brother David. Right? Maybe Brother William. But this is his spirit flowing. And I promise you in Jesus' name, if you choose to be planted and rooted in worship, watch the abundance of a God is flowing. Amen. Amen. Watch. We're all experiencing it. Hallelujah. We're all experiencing it. How great is a worship service when a beloved daughter of God can come in on a walker? Leave it here on a Sunday morning and say, I don't need that anymore. Amen. Hallelujah! And we believe that in Jesus' name. That's our God. Amen. Say, will you get up? Get up. And go. Get up. No. When we talk about the beginning, it's Alpha. When we talk about the end, it's Omega. That is who I am is. The great I am is the Alpha and Omega. The beginning and the end. Amen. The reason why we say get up and go, this is exactly what Lord Jesus Christ had to do. He was seated at the throne in heaven. Everything was going haywire. Finally, looks over. Come on, man. Come on. Father says, it's time to get up and go. Philip is coming. I can't. Holy Spirit's a teacher. Listen. Could you imagine when he got up? You think Lord Jesus got up and said, Oh, sorry, people. No, you didn't. Huh? No, you didn't. Maybe some of y'all need to hear that again. You think our Lord Jesus Christ got up and said, Oh, I'm sorry, people. No, no, no. Or do you think Lord Jesus Christ said, oh, I'm yeah. going to take my body. Hey. I'm taking my body. I'm taking my body. I'm taking my body. Right now, Father God says, Can you take what is yours here at the altar tonight? And then will you take what is yours? Say it with me, I see paradise. I see paradise. Hallelujah, beloved church family, it's coming. 2020, dead and wrong. Amen. Yeah, yeah. We got a new year coming. Yeah. There's somebody that there's somebody to asked me this week. This message is Wednesday. You better touch on what's coming. No. God didn't give me permission to. Amen. Yeah. Praise God. Say it with me. If we're still here, yeah. we'll hear it Sunday. Yeah. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. Yeah. If God's calling on your heart, I beg you, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, don't leave the same. Amen. Don't leave the same. The glory of God, his view and opinion is on the inside. Which means the only way you can affect Brother PJ, God's view and opinion of you, is what you allow in here. If you think you're sick, then guess what? I have never come across a person that thought sick thought and was as healthy as can be. I never. I never did. But you know what? Happy, joyful, rejoicing people, I always see victorious. Amen. Amen. Victorious. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. 